one of the most popular uh, American actor in the Ethiopian community. So we start this interview, I would say, just naturally how you got into uh, acting and how you know come to the point where you start to act on this uh, professionally. On this, yeah, yeah. I was about 13 and I was going to school in Malibu, California, where I grew up. Okay. And every morning I would see Steve McQueen, Diane Cannon, yeah. Cary Grant, Ali McGraw. These were big stars in the in the yep, 70s, yep. in the 70s, um, and into the 80s. Uh, Steve McQueen's an icon, and Cary Grant is certainly an icon. And uh, in my 13-year-old brain, I saw who Steve McQueen and Cary Grant were married to, and they were married to these beautiful actresses. Yeah, Ali McGraw was with Steve McQueen at the time, and uh, Diane Cannon was with Cary Grant, and they had uh, Jennifer. That was their their daughter, and I thought, I guess I got to be an actor if I'm ever going to get yeah. a girl that looks like that. Oh, okay. So that was my first, was my first motivation was was to was to be like Steve McQueen and Cary Grant and okay. get a beautiful actress on my. Uh, great, movie. great. Uh, so how did you get the first uh, you know to get into acting? The first professional. Yeah, professionally. I started to study after that summer, 13, 14 years old. I started to do summer theater. Um, I started to study with some people in Hollywood. Um, Lillian Chauvin, Jack Coslin, um, uh, tons of people. Okay. Uh, and then uh, when I was 18 or 19, I was reading for the first Nightmare on Elm Street, mm -hmm. um, Wes Craven's movie. And I went in to read for Wes Craven, and I went in three or four times to read for Wes Craven for the lead in Nightmare on Elm Street, and it was down to me and Johnny Depp. Oh, really? And um, I got a phone call the next day after my last meeting with Wes, uh, and and I said hello, and I said hold hold for Wes Craven, and Wes got on the phone and said, hey, listen, Adams, uh, I got to give it to Johnny, uh. and I said. And I was really mad. I yeah. said, why? I said, why? Why do you got to give it to him? And he says, well, I need a certain innocence for this role. And let's face it, you've never been innocent. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't argue with you him. You couldn't argue with that. couldn't argue with yeah. him. Yeah. Just didn't, I didn't have that, uh, yeah. that Johnny Depp beauty innocence. beauty and innocence, you know, that he that he's retained his whole career. Yeah. You know, he's a beautiful yeah. guy. He's a great actor. And, um, but I've always hated him for that. <laughs> you, know, you have great just in your <laughs> All right. Uh, so that was it. They that was the first one. The that first was, one. That was, how yeah. got, that was how I got in the union here and the Screen Actors Guild was through that movie. And, um, Wes gave me one line because he was nice because mm -hmm. he didn't give me the lead. He gave yeah. it to Johnny. He said, look, I'll give you a part so you can get your SAG card. And I was 18. Okay. And, uh, so that was very nice of him. And uh, so I did, I did my one line and it got cut out of the movie. <laughs> it never ended up in the movie. But okay. I got my SAG card and I was off and running. And um, I started making the rounds in town here in Hollywood and, and auditioning. And I started to uh, study with the head of casting for ABC Daytime, yeah. which was Bobby Hoffman. And he started to give me, uh, I started to join his classes. I was in class with him several times a week. And he kept putting me up for soap operas, mm -hmm. and um, if there was, if, if he was, if they were trying to cast a girl, they would let me come in and read the guy part. Okay, for okay. the girl who was screen gotcha. testing. Gotcha. And he said, "Look, they'll they'll notice you eventually. If if I put you here, they'll they'll." And eventually, I was screen testing for ABC, and okay. I screen tested for All My Children a couple of times, and then I went to New York. They flew me to New York in 1986. Uh, they flew me to New York to test for um, all my children, mm -hmm. and I didn't get it. And they took my test and they gave it to Ryan's Hope yeah. at ABC because they were looking for someone to play John Ryan. Yeah. And they called me back a couple months later to test for John Ryan for Ryan's Hope, and. Uh, I ended up getting that, and that was a three-year contract. Nice. And uh, that was really the beginning of my career, was uh, was playing John Ryan on Ryan's Home. 
Okay. It was great. 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 Let's uh, get uh, close to the most important part, right. the Acapulco Bay. Right. <laughs> right. So how did it, how do you, how were you, you know, casted for that one? How did you hear um, about it? That was, that was, was, that was, that was, that was an interesting time. That was 1994. I had already obviously done my three years on Ryan's Hope. Um, I had, after that in 1989, I came back from New York to Los Angeles and Stephen Cannell hired me to do a two hour pilot for ABC. ABC mm -hmm. hired me again yeah. uh, to do Thunderbolt Row. We went down to Miami and shot a two hour movie of the week pilot mm -hmm. for uh, Thunderbolt Row um, with me and Jesu Garcia um, and Rob Estes and um, Peter Mernick, so some really cool people. Um, and we did that, and I came back, and they got in an argument, Stephen Cannell and ABC, about how they were going to make the show, and Stephen just went, I'm not going to make the show. Okay. Um, so then I went and did The Young Riders for ABC, and did the two hour season finale of that in 1990. And then 91, I started to do guest stars and movies and. and um, so it was around 1994, I got a call from my manager and he said, look, there's this, there's this thing. And I said, what thing? And he said, well, it's a soap opera. And I said, I told you I'm not going to do any more soap operas. Yeah. Because I didn't want to do them anymore because yeah. you have to understand about soap operas. Um, not Acapulco Bay, but the way they were shot here, the way they're still shot here, yeah. is 90% of it, you're in a studio, I know. you've got three cameras, and you, it's, it's a very functional, very specific way of telling a story. Oh. Uh, and it's very repetitive, it's very redundant. Yeah. Um, you have to say the same thing over and over again because people are doing the housework while they're watching, and they're looking at a screen this big, and yeah. it's a very, very... Um, difficult uh, job mm -hmm. being on soap and um, you can't you, you have to do it a certain way there's a very specific structure on how to do it and I didn't want to do it anymore yeah you know? I loved doing it when I did it in my 20s and and I was very fortunate to get to do Ryan soap for ABC um, I just didn't want to do it so he said look it, it's it shoots in Mexico City in Acapulco and I said okay I'm listening and he said, it's a telenovela. And I said, but isn't that the same thing as a soap opera? He goes, no, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it, is, it is, but it yeah, isn't. Yeah. And the difference a lot of the times is, is that in Mexico and, and, and abroad, they're shown at night sometimes too. Yeah. So he wasn't really lying to me. Yeah, but yeah. there are differences, but yeah, it's all the same. Yeah, they, they would air at different times. Soap operas here always in the, in morning, the morning and into yeah. the afternoon. So he said, it's called a telenovela, and it's a co-production between Fox, between 20th Century Fox Television and Televisa in yeah. Mexico. And I said, he said, just go in and meet the casting director. I believe it was Joy Todd. I think it was Joy Todd. Um, very nice woman. And uh, so I went in and I, and I met with her, and I read with her, and she, she said, you know, you got the. You she got didn't the say you got it, but she yeah. said you got to come back and read for the producers and okay, okay, all that. So, I called my manager and I said, "Look, this is getting real. You know, what do they want to do?" And 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 he said, "Well, you know, do you want to do it?" And I said, "Well, you know, I'm I'm not working. Of course, I want to do it. Yeah, and I, I love the role." Um, I just don't know about going to Mexico for six months or a year. I, I, you know, I have a dog, and you know, am I going to get to take my dog? I, I wanted to take my dog. Yeah. Um, so, and I'll come back to that. Yeah. But uh, so I went in and I met the producer Carlos Sotomayor. Uh, very interesting, nice man, uh, successful guy, very successful dude in, in Mexico and in telenovelas. Yeah. Um, and I read for them. And I got a call from my manager later that day, and they said they want you to go. And I said, okay. So we talked about the money and, and all that. And, yeah. Um, he said, so what do, what, do you, what, do you, what do you want to ask them? What are your demands? I said, I don't have any demands. I just would like to take my dog with me. 
Yeah. So he said, I'll call you back. He said, no, no way. They're not going to let you bring your dog. You're going to be living in hotels. Yeah. You know, you're going to be two weeks in Mexico City, and then you get on a plane and go to Acapulco for two weeks. So that's how we did it. Two weeks in two Acapulco, weeks in Acapulco, two weeks in Mexico City. What was City. the reason? Because we did all the interiors uh, at the Televisa, yeah. at the studio in Mexico City, and then the house, the big mansion at Acapulco, we would do all the exteriors okay. in Acapulco, okay. which was great because... Mexico City is the air quality is unbelievably bad mm -hmm. because you're 7,000 feet up yeah and there's 30 million people there's probably more now but then there was 30 million people yeah. and you're at 7,000 feet so there's no air yeah it's yeah. just all cars yeah you know so you would uh, you know after yeah. two weeks you get black lung yeah and then we go to the beach and we'd all get to like detox and detox. clean Enjoy, out yeah. yeah it was great it was really it was really a nice it was it was, a, it was we had a lot of fun so they said you can't bring your dog and I said well I'm not going <laughs> and he called me back about an hour later and he goes are you really going to pass on the job because they won't let you bring your dog I said yes and I hung up the phone wow he calls me back about 10 minutes later and he goes really are you gonna and I said no I'll get someone to come live at the house so I moved a friend of mine into okay. my place I was I, living in the Hollywood Hills at the time yeah and uh so I had a friend move in wow. and take care of my much. dog. And and we were off and running and we all met each other at the airport for the first time. Yeah. You know, nobody knew who who was who. We didn't know each other and yeah. we became this uh, a very close uh, family very fast. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So um, let's talk about the, the you know the production how the interaction between actors. One of the questions asked by uh, audience mm -hmm. is uh, uh, do you have any, you know, pers you know, when you talk to each other, have, you know, have personal conversation, do you guys have some kind of, you know, uh, what's, the, you know, do, do, you, do you Rachel close to you or to Tony? Okay, in real life. Okay. In, okay, in that's, real life. That's, yeah, that's, a, like that's that. a very sneaky question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, uh, we all, be, like I said, we all became fast friends and we spent all day and all night together yeah. um, there was eight or nine of us that went down there including the director Tom De Simone um, terrific guy and there was uh, there was eight or nine of us Americans uh, the director and the cast mm. uh, coming down and then the rest were all were all were all Latin and Mexican um, crew and cast okay so um, we immediately got thrown into um, you know, a pool of, of really terrific actors that, that live in Mexico City and, and Acapulco. I think most of them were hired out of Mexico City through Televisa, obviously. Um, but it, it, it was like most jobs that, that go on longer than a week or two. You have to find who you're comfortable with okay. and, and who you want to spend the time with when you're not shooting. Mm -hmm. And it just so happened that we all liked each other enough to want to spend the time with each other. Okay. And okay. Uh, there was never any issues uh, between us. We all liked each other. Um, we all had a lot of fun. Okay. You know, we okay. were we were young, and they were most of them were younger than me. Oh, really? Um, okay. But I was in my 30s at the time, and well, Michael Cole um, uh, was was an older actor who used to be on the Mod Squad back in the 60s, 70s. And um, so he was he was the oldest. Okay. Um, okay. But Michael was a good dude. Uh, but it was just it was a, it was a great group of people. You yeah. Know? It, and and we really didn't have a problem with each other. I, I love Tony. You know, Tony and I were were obviously playing Cain and Abel. Yeah. From the from the Bible. You yeah. Know, if you want to yeah. put it that way, I yeah. always saw us as Cain and Abel. Yeah. Um, it is. I, and and we used to talk about that. That you know we were we were we were definitely Cain and Abel. Yeah. Um, and uh, we spent a lot of time together and we worked out together and we all did that. We all had to stay in shape and we all had a very small window of time in between shooting. There wasn't a lot of downtime. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I think maybe out of, you know, all the episodes, maybe I wasn't in four or five of them. Yeah. But the rest well, you of them. You were almost I think in I was most in of them. Most of yeah. them. And Tony and, and, and Raquel, they were in almost every frame of the thing, you know, because their love story was 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 the key. Was was. But the, I would say you and uh, uh, Raquel are 
the one who acted the most. Yes. Because we had the Tony most conflict. There yeah, we had the mo we had the most conflict so. because he was he was the the how do I say this? Um, the the conflict was between me and Raquel. That's the most important part of the show. And I would say. and and, but the separate was between me and and Tony. Yeah. And that was a sibling rivalry that he had more than me and I wanted what he had. Yeah. So I wanted to take the entire fortune from myself through her. Through her. Yeah. And to eliminate him so that I not only get the fortune but I get the girl. Yeah. And it was But it you was, couldn't win the love. No. No. <laughs> and I wasn't interested in that. I, I know. It didn't <laughs> Max wasn't interested in the love. He was yeah. he was in it, he was in it for the game. That was yeah. he was in yeah. it, he was in it for what he could get. So let's talk about the character, Max. Mm -hmm. I would say uh, for guys, even for girls, uh, it's more uh, I mean the Tony is a very nice guy. Okay, fine, mm -hmm. you know, lovable.